Welcome to this service of Holy Communion, this Eucharist, from the benefits of Chalcombe, St Mary's, the church we're in now, and St Stephen's Bath. My name's Philip Hawthorne, I'm the rector of the benefits, and Lizzie, my wife, is behind the camera today. Wherever you're watching this, and whenever you're watching this, you are very welcome. We are still scattered as we watch these recorded services, but God unites us by his spirit. God is no uh, respecter of time and space and unites us as we gather together to worship. A couple of things before we begin properly. If you haven't got an order of service, you can stop the video and download it from our website, stephensbath.org.uk, uh, or you can just enjoy hearing the words and join in whenever you would like to. Also, um, I invite you to have bread and wine with you. Obviously, I'll be taking communion on behalf of everybody watching, but if you'd like to have some bread and wine with you as you watch at home, then that would be wonderful. As ever, thrilled that church members from both churches are taking part today in the readings and intercessions and in the choice of hymns. Normally in our benefice, we use the lectionary for our readings each week, but uh, in June and July, we often have a small mini-series of sermons, and that's what we begin today. Uh, we've invited both churches, uh, people in both churches, to, to, to tell us what they would like to hear a sermon about. And so we have four weeks of these sermons, the first of which is today. And the subject is unconditional love. So let's be still and prepare ourselves to worship together. Jesus says, So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. We gather in the name of God, who is our maker, redeemer, and abiding and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. So we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour in the same manner that you love yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to be our advocate in heaven, to bring us to eternal life, and to save us from all that leads us away from God's love. These things we call our sins. And so, in penitence and faith, we confess them now, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. So together we pray. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, Forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And a moment to stay with any of those words or phrases that resonated with you. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, 
confirm and strengthen you in all that is good and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You might like to stand, don't worry if you don't want to, but as forgiven people we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for today. Lord of love, planting within us the gift of yourself, help us by our lives and understanding to nurture that gift so that your love in us will grow and flourish and that your love through us will give life to the world. In Jesus Christ, the embodiment of love. Amen. Both our readings this week are by people from the St Stephen's gardening team. There's been a lot of activity in the garden around the church for the first time since lockdown. Uh, that's been wonderful to see. And I popped down there, not just with my trowel, but my camera as well. Rick and Joy Mepham were married in St Stephen's a good few years ago. And they are real, really part of the church there. And they are going to do our first reading for us. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you, Rick and Joy. Lovely to see you. And thanks for your work in the garden and to all gardeners. Mary and John Greenwood, many people think, are the very face of hospitality and welcome at St Stephen's. They've both been church wardens in the past. Mary still is church warden. And they are going to read our gospel for us now.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided this property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and travelled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran, put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But his father said to the slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one. Put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let's eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now his eldest son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him home safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, you have devoured your property with the prostitutes. You killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you O Christ. Christ. Let's pray. Loving God, may my words reflect your will for our lives and our church. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is the first week of our short sermon series. Four weeks of sermons that you have suggested, the people's sermons. And uh, this first week, we're considering unconditional love. The readings show what it means within Jesus' teachings, the story of the prodigal son, and also the nature of love itself in Paul's beautiful poem in 1 Corinthians. It's Lorna from Chalcombe who suggested this theme and she said that I don't think it's spoken about enough, she says, that God's love is portrayed as conditional really messed me up in my early life. All four weeks of sermons do have something in common, though, I think. They help us to consider how we view the Bible and what we believe it says. They encourage us maybe to examine, to ask questions of the Bible and hopefully see it in a new way. 
because either God's love is conditional or it's not. The key moment in the prodigal story, after the prodigal has asked for his inheritance, to all intents and purposes wishing his father were dead, after he's then wasted all the money in wild living, after he's trudged home rehearsing his speech of regret, after these, the father sees him when he was still a long way off and runs to meet him. At the time, people hearing this story would have been incredulous. Rich men were of the highest status. He was also a landowner. They would never have run, hitching up their robes. They had people to run around after them, after all. Maybe Jesus' hearers thought that he was running in order to exact a revenge. But as he arrives at his son, he falls on his neck and kisses him. All is forgotten in the pleasure that he is back. The people at the time would have probably wanted some kind of scolding, maybe a time of punishment, a reprogramming, maybe a repayment of the debt. But no, this wild, disrespectful reprobate gets a party, gets total forgiveness, gets unconditional love. And this is so consistent with how Jesus deals, deals with people. There is never a condition to his healing. There is never a condition to his blessing. There is never a condition to his being with people, no matter who they are and where their place is in society. How can love be this strong? Well, because God's love is stronger than death. Paul tells us that love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. If God is love, then this is what God is like. It's love that the Bible shows us. But what about when it seems not to show us that love? Before I chose the readings for today, I asked Lorna, who's a passionate art lover and maker, what her favourite religious painting is. And she said it was The Return of the Prodigal by Rembrandt. It's a stunning painting, depicting that moment that the son has returned. Knowing what we know about this moment and the story and all it means, the work is given even more beauty. It can barely contain the power of its meaning. There are, of course, smaller elements to the painting, the, the pigments that Rembrandt used, his brushwork, his technique, the competition, that wonderful stillness of the tableau after all the running, the contrast in the clothing and their textures, the fact that the hands of the father, one is masculine and one is feminine. And there is the context too. It was probably painted after Rembrandt's own son, Titus, had died. And then there's the symbolism of the colours. Red is for love. And of course, we bring to any painting ourselves, our own story. And if we say the overriding red that we see, that's the love in the painting. What about the other parts? The dark background, the raggedness of the sun's clothes, his lost shoe the shadows that the others are in. We say there's no love in these, surely. There's no red. But the answer to that would be not at all. Love is in the whole painting, if you know the story. I read this week that the Bible bulges and creaks 
at the effort of holding God. The Bible was written, edited, compiled over hundreds of years by lots of people, inspired people to try and express the enormity of God, of love. Yes, you can look at the minutiae of verses or even sentences. You can see love only in the red letter passages. Some Christians project into it our own story, that human inbuilt desire for justice, that sins must be paid for, that we might somehow endeavour to earn favour, that what some do and who some are are the shadowy areas where God's love surely cannot be. And suddenly this perfect love of God becomes mired in condition. Suddenly God is him upstairs who we have to please at all costs. God of instant judgment. God of the short temper whose anger is always ready to burst out. We are made to suffer for our wrongs. And we shouldn't blame ourselves. As Paul says, now we see in a mirror dimly. Now we see love only in part. But then, but then, we shall fully know it. The whole of the Bible shows us that love when we know the story, the story of God's endless giving, his love without limits and without condition. As we approach God, even at our most broken, what we see is not a frown or a ticking finger. What we see is God running to meet us. We feel the ground shake at the energy of his footfall. We feel his arms around us. We feel the tears of joy on our necks. Love keeps no record of wrongs, Paul tells us. If that's true and God is love, there is no record of our sins. How many times should I forgive, Jesus is asked. Seventy times seven, as many times as forgiveness is required, is the answer. Each encounter with God is the perfect now. Not full of condemnation, but full of the possibility of what love can do. Because our story, our story is the cross. There, the red blood of Jesus shows God's love for us. But not just that, all Jesus' life, his death and his new life. Jesus' suffering is so that we don't have to. And if our hearts are stretched to understand the act of love, we are reassured that God does not demand conditions of us. God's gift of love is free and full and final. Amen. So we declare together our faith in God. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, Judith Pepler, a long-time member of St Mary's in Chalcombe, treasurer for many years. We're so grateful to all that she's given to the church there, and she is now going to lead us in our intercessions. Let us pray to God, through whose word our words are given life. Teach us, good Lord, to pray aright, that we may be in tune with your will, in harmony with one another, and at peace in our hearts and minds. Bless the Church, that it may be fruitful in good works. Bless our Christian family, both here in our two churches and throughout the world. May we witness to your love by the kind of lives we lead and the works we do in your name. We thank you for our clergy team, for Philip and Debbie, for Andrew as he settles into curacy, and for Elaine, Josh and Abigail, for Tim May as he finishes his second year in Durham. And we pray and give thanks for our two Janes, Jane Ho as she finishes her first year of training for ordination, and for Jane Warren as she prepares for her reader's selection. We give thanks for their willingness to be led further on the path to discipleship, and may their journey be in enthusiasm, enjoyment and peace, shared with those they serve. And we thank you, Lord, for all the devoted service given and enjoyed by both laity and clergy, who live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless, O Lord, our sovereign Queen Elizabeth, defender of faith in you. Guide the government of this nation and the lawmakers of all nations, that mankind may honour one another and seek the common good. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We bring before you, O Lord, our community here in Lansdowne. We pray for our schools as they reopen and welcome back more children. St Stephen's, Kingswood, Abbot Alphage, the Royal High School and St Mark's. We pray for all those who are reopening their businesses locally, the Richmond Arms, the Hare and Hounds, and all who are working from home or on furlough. We thank you, Lord, for our families, for our friends and for our neighbours near and far. Help us to care for them as we would wish them to care for us, and grant us a single-mindedness of purpose that we are able to serve Christ in one another and both live to love and love to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we know that your loving concern is for both the sick and the healthy. Give grace to those who tend the sick and to the sick who suffer in body, mind and spirit, especially Bill Fraser, Martin Richardson, Sally Pym and Muriel Bird, Jean and Paul Vosper and Rhys, for Oscar and Amelia and for Ellie Dixon, still in hospital after the arrival of baby Isabel and for their family Kenny, Josh and William. Comfort all who suffer and give them patience and courage. Let their hopes be fulfilled that they may look forward to a new and richer life of loving trust in you. Lift up their hearts, set firm their resolve, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to give special thanks for the life of Richard Brooke, 
remembering all he did for our two churches over the years. His teaching, friendship, and unwavering Christian faith in his creator God. We pray for Valerie, his sister Bridget, and sons David and Patrick. Also for Des Gray, Mike, and Sue, and Jess. We give thanks that the faithful departed are transfigured in the light of your love. And at this time of their year's mind, we bring before you Grace Sybil Perry, Phyllis Maslin, baby Noeline Marie Jones, and Eileen Emily Elizabeth King. Lord God, give us grace to live according to your commandments and to follow in their steps. With St Mary, St Stephen, and with all the company of saints, we rejoice in fellowship and communion, and we share in their lively joy. Into your gracious keeping and unfailing love, we commend ourselves and all believers. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Judith. Wonderful to see you praying in our church here. Now, the peace. Peace to you from God, our Creator. Peace from Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. Thank you very much. Normally we have a hymn at this point in our service, but today is something a bit different. Kate Seeley, who's been a member of St Stephen's for many years, has chosen a piece for us to listen to. It's a setting of For the Beauty of the Earth by Philip Stopford. And she's chosen this particular version because her daughter Helly is part of the ensemble that's singing it. And Andrew Avramenko, our new curate, has put some of his own pictures and videos on for us to enjoy as we listen to this beautiful, beautiful piece of music. Thank you. 
holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of eternal life and make us branches of the true vine. Blessed be God forever. Beloved, the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Ever loving God, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us, announcing your kingdom is near. He opened wide for us his arms on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. Mary, St. Stephen and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Being made one in communion with God, let us pray with confidence as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. 
Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and now lives for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Amen. blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Let us pray. Faithful God, fulfilling your promises by showing that love is stronger than death and opening to every race and nation the way of eternal life, open our lips and lives by your Spirit that we may tell of your glory in who we are. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ go with you wherever he may lead you. May he lead you through the wilderness, protect you in the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors and the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Abiding Spirit, be with you and remain with you, and all you love, pray for, miss, and remember, in this sacred moment, and for always. Amen. We are going to sing a hymn now. Um, we prayed for Ellie uh, Dixon, we Give, gave thanks for Isabel earlier in our intercessions. Ellie is still very poorly in hospital. Kenny is with her and we are praying for them. Uh, but I wanted to dedicate this hymn to them. So this is one of the hymns that we sang at their wedding last year, Lord of all faithfulness. Let's sing this together.
wonderful hymn. Bless you, Ellie and Kenny, Josh and William and lovely Isabel. We'll continue to pray for you. Just a couple of things before we finish. Thanks to uh, everyone who helps to get these services recorded, edited and online to Lizzie and Andrew and to Linda and to uh, PCCs and church wardens for your ongoing work uh, in keeping the churches safe and secure until we can reopen. And that's been very much in our thoughts and prayers over the last couple of weeks. Both PCCs have felt that it's right that we don't reopen for Sunday morning services at the moment. The number of restrictions, both in numbers and also in what we're allowed to do in those services, means that I think we'd spend more time reflecting on what we're missing rather than what we're having as we gather. But we have decided that we're going to have uh, a service of even song with music and reflection uh, next Sunday, the 19th, at half past five at St. Stephen's. So a good chance for us all to gather, to be together, to say that wonderful uh, Book of Common Prayer even song, to listen to some music together and hear a reflection. And Andrew Abramenko and I will be leading that service, your first chance to see him in action. So that's at 5.30 at St. Stephen's next Sunday. If you don't already give regularly to our churches and you'd like to, please get in touch. I'll give you information of how you can take out a standing order. Or if you're used to putting some money in the collection plate and you'd like to make an offering, then please also get in touch and I'll tell you how you can do that. Our morning live streamed morning prayer continues at eight o'clock every morning on our Facebook page and then on YouTube. And we're looking forward to being with you next weekend again in our services, Scruffy Church and also Debbie will be leading our Eucharist. Have a really blessed week. And now go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.